Okay, we will restart our council meeting, starting with item three, um, which is public comment for items not on the agenda. Um, with a time limit of three minutes per speaker, do we have anyone wishing to make a public comment? Um, either here in the Nat U Hill room or on Zoom. I see no takers. So we will move to item four, which is the adoption of the agenda. Does anyone wish to add or remove an item from tonight's agenda? All right. Um, then it's adopted and we move to department updates. Uh, do we have any departments that wish to make an update at this time? I didn't say this, but if you're on Zoom, feel free to um, raise your hand and we can promote you promptly. All right, blazing ahead. We have council liaison updates. Are there any um, council members who would like to provide an update? Oh my goodness, look at us go. Now, um, we will begin with um, our legal department and the um, general obligation bond, item number seven. Council, I move to approve ordinance 2022-36, ordinance authorizing the issuance of general obligation bonds and ordinance 2022-37, an appropriation ordinance for the general obligation bond, which are outlined in the ordinances contained in the council's meeting packet. These ordinances were read into the record at the September 27, 2022 work session. Second. Welcome, Mr. Packerel. Well, thank you. Um, I guess we went through this pretty thoroughly at the last meeting, so I'm here if you have questions. Um, and I think. Uh, uh, Angie Purdy is probably on Zoom at this meeting as well, if you have any questions about the projects. Okay, are there any comments or questions for Mr. Cockrell or Ms. Purdy? Yes. Just wondering what, what rate you're predicting at this point. I, I have not heard any any different than the last time. I think the last time we thought they were both this one and the next one would be about 3%. Uh, we hope Three? To, yeah. that, okay. We hope to close before Thanksgiving. Okay. Uh, any comments or questions to my left? I forgot to look this direction. Okay. All right. Um, public comment. Is there any public comment on the general obligation bond? Seeing none, may I have a roll call vote, please? Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Hawk? No. No. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Motion passed majority six to one. Now we move to item 7B. Council, I move to approve ordinance 2022-34, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of local income tax revenue bonds <clears throat> and bond anticipation notes, which is outlined in the ordinance contained in the council's meeting packet. This ordinance was read into the record at the September 27, 2022 work session. Second. And, and, sorry, jumped the gun a little bit. Uh, similar to the last one, I think we had a really in-depth conversation at the last uh, council, at the council work session in addition I talked, discussed the, this bond with the community justice response committee, response. response committee, sorry, I, 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 they've changed the name and I always get caught up on the Got first it. word and I, I, I kind of, um, and so we gave an update there as well. I will say last night we had the first uh, hearing at the city plan commission. Uh, they had some questions, of course, this is a, a big 
question, big topic, and um, we're going to have the second hearing on that on November 14th um, at last night's meeting. And I, and I hope this came out at the CJRC meeting before. I'm working with uh, David Gardner, who does our maintenance at the current justice facility to uh, get some, some of the grass there trimmed down and have uh, council elected officials that, that the CJRC and this anybody from the city who wants to come to just kind of go out and look at the property. I think that is that that will help answer a lot of questions people have. I know it's not directly related to the to the to the ban question before you, but I I thought that would be a pretty good update for you guys to have. But again, if you have any questions, something that wasn't clear last time, I'm more than happy to answer. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions for Mr. Cockrell? Yes, Councilor Hawk. Uh, just a comment, um, because I've been getting a lot of uh, pushback on this, saying, why on earth do we need to spend that kind of money for a jail? And, and we don't need that kind of uh, size of a property just for a jail, correct? Uh, our consultants uh, who were doing our site assessment indicated that we needed at least 25 acres uh, for, for a jail facility. A lot of that's drainage, some of that's parking. I guess the, my response is need is a tenuous term there. And, and my, my feeling is that when we looked at a larger site than the minimum, because we, when we did the search, we couldn't find any available space. I mean, really, this is the only one within the city of Bloomington limits. And so we wanted to make sure we had plenty of space there for the next reiteration so that, you know, our, my predecessors and, and maybe even yours won't have to go through a, a large search for a large piece of property in the future. So for current jail needs, this is larger, but I think if we, if we expand that to future needs for a jail, because as much as we like it, jails don't last forever. This is part of this. And I also think there's other things in our uh, criminal justice um, review and our studies that have other needs that we need that, that, that I think everyone's gonna be looking at and utilizing. And maybe this would be an appropriate place for that. Maybe it wouldn't be. I would just like to uh, remind you that we already did this once. We bought 80 some acres for jail and other mm -hmm. uh, issues as well. We're still setting on that property and now we're buying another property with huge amount of acreage. And um, I think it's a lot to be setting on both of those. Uh, and both times we were hearing, oh, that's a great place to put a jail. And so, uh, I listened carefully to the people who were speaking to me and they were concerned and I don't represent my thoughts. I have to represent theirs as well. So I wanted to share that as well with you. Councilor McKen. I, I, first of all, I, I just want to say, Mr. Crocker, you, you did an exceptionally good job last night presenting to the city plan commission. Um, I was very impressed. And also, I think you just made a really important point that needs to be reiterated, and that's that you we're not just buying property for the jail that we know we need to build, but the next one after that, um, so that we so that we don't have to go through all this again. Um, so, as you pointed out, and as uh, you know, I think everybody who's talked to us about jails has pointed out, jails uh, don't last very, or they don't last as long as other buildings of the equivalent square footage. They're, they're beat up more. And, uh, and so, you know, we have to be thinking about, about that as well. The acreage is, is, especially in the city, is only going to be harder to come by uh, in 30 years when we have to build the next jail. So I, I, think this is, um, I think this is one of the answers to some of the concerns that uh, Councillor Hawk is raising. Other comments or questions? Um, Councillor Iverson. Yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Cockrell, uh, with the action here that we're poised to take on this uh, ban note, um, will we be conveying this information to the Justice Department or uh, any other partners that are looking for action on our behalf to rectify the current jail situation? 
if I understand correctly, I, th I think the answer to, the, to that question is the, this band, bond anticipation note is for a site, is, is for purchasing a site and other related items towards the, the purchase, such as, you know, including expenditures we've already had with the site assessment, the phase one environmentals and all the, the geology study, you know, those kind of things, plus if there's anything left over a little bit for the, the design work. So I, this, this is purely capital money. This wouldn't be able to be utilized for other programming or, or services. I think that was your question and I hope I answered. Uh, if I could clarify just real quick, um, I meant more, um, can, can this actually be used to show progress um, uh, toward a, a goal? Yeah, I, absolutely. I think this is a step along that path. Okay, thank you. And will it be meaningful to the DOJ, I think is what he's implying. Well, at this point, uh, or the ACL. We're, we're really worrying with the, or we're really, really under the guise our agreed order is with the Indiana Civil Liberty Union. And I think they would see this as a progressive step forward. Um, he had emailed me a while back and I gave him a, an update that, you know, we, we had identified a property. We're going through the appropriate steps to determine if that is the correct property, including uh, working with the city plan commission. And, and thank you. I, I always feel a little nervous talking in front of city officials for some reason. Um, so I think we're, this is all part of that process. And I think he's been made aware that, that here's where we're at in, the, in that process. Councilor Deckard. Thank you. I, um, I appreciate your comments. I also appreciate everything you're doing. And uh, for the record, I also get a little nervous talking in front of city people myself. Um, <laughs> my question to you, and then I, I've got a comment after that, but my question is, if just hypothetical, somebody watching at home or us watching here, if we would not do anything, let's say we just say, I'm gonna sit on this, I'm not gonna do anything for a long, long time, there is a possibility that the courts or someone not from this county picks how this works for this county, this community. Am I, is that fair to say? Yeah, and that's actually happened in Vigo County. Uh, I, I think that's one of the things we want to avoid. I also think we want to avoid um, what has been in our report, which is not being able to provide a constitutional level of care for, for the people in our custody. I think that is, that is a direct that's the result of not addressing that unconstitutionality concern is that it will go to the courts and they will correct it and they will correct it. And we won't have as much ability to determine how that correction occurs. Right. One of the things I, I would just say is a kind of a follow up comment. And I appreciate you, you just kind of laying that out. Um, and I've kind of been trying to make that point is um, sometimes in our community, you know, we're happy with judicial decisions and sometimes we are not, but there's nothing like that decision being made right here in this sort of spirited process where public can comment, mm -hmm. local officials can be engaged versus otherwise. And I'd even follow that up further, trying to, you, you were talking about finding a location and the difficulties of that given current circumstances. I'd go even one step further. It is hard in this community to find a, a place for a new home to go into that neighbors are okay with and that everybody invests in and nobody's got a dispute and all the rules work and mm -hmm. creek don't rise and all that good <laughs> stuff. And so my point is sometimes in this community, I've noticed we get a little funny about details on new things coming up. We kind of missed the point that we've had a lot of new people coming here and that, that is a blessing and a great thing for us. Um, this is not an easy place. I think we found a good spot or as good as what we're gonna find given everything given that it was hard for us to replace a post office 12 years ago in the downtown sector, let alone this. And I just, I want that to kind of come back around to people because I think sometimes we're sitting at the restaurant looking for a menu to order off that it may not be available to us. And I think this is a good thing in that regard. And maybe in response, we started looking at downtown, right? When we first started looking for property, we started looking downtown. And I, and I said this at the plan commission meeting last night, you know, 10 years ago, you know, when, when we were thinking about this and, you know, we have the Thompson site, but it, we, I had just toured the Martinsville facility, the 
Morgan County Jail, and they're on about six, to, they were on at that point in time, six to seven acres. I don't know what it is now. I don't know if it's changed or anything like that. Um, really, the only vacant spot outside of uh, Thompson, which, which uh, Commissioner Hawk had referenced earlier, was the scrapyard. The only downtown spot was basically the, the old scrapyard, and that had a very irregular shape. And I'm like, I don't even know if that would work. Um, there, there just isn't that kind of space downtown. I mean, when people say, well, we would rather have it downtown, I'm like, well, of course we would. Yeah. But we just don't have that space available. Thank you very much. Are there other comments or questions? No. No. Um, I had a question, and I'm just maybe not remembering. Have we gotten all of the appraisals, and or are we still waiting on uh, the, the the second appraisal is due on October eighteenth. Okay, so we are still waiting on that. Okay. Um, any other? Did that spur something? Go ahead. Yeah, sorry, but just to clarify, that appraisal, the results of that appraisal could only lower the price we could pay, not raise it. It could not raise the price. Okay. If it, if it comes in lower, we'll have to go talk with the, talk to the pro property owner. owner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so we can ask for public comment at this point. If there's any public comment online, please raise your hand. Any pop comment here? No. Okay, seeing none, then could I have a roll call vote, please? Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor Hawk? No. Councillor McKim? Yes. Motion passed majority six to one. Thank you. All right, now we're moving to item number eight with our Parks and Recreation Department. Council, I move to approve the park, Parks and Recreation Department's request for an additional appropriation in Fund 1008-03 General Fund Parks of $20,000 in the capital category. Second. And we have uh, Kelly Whitmer, our Parks Director here. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Um, we're here for an additional $20,000 to purchase two new zero turn mowers. We will be trading in our two oldest mowers. This is the best deal I have seen in decades. And uh, we've also uh, purchased a, a month ago a couple porta toilets. And if we do come in under budget, which when I mean under budget, like $500 or so, we would like to um, purchase a couple additional benches for the Cars Farm Greenway. Yes. Can so you we can in. you adjust your mic so you're speaking oh. into it? Thank you. Now can you hear me? Yes. yes. All righty. Um, anything else you need to know? I don't have any questions. Do you have questions? Questions? Yes. yes. So, um, would you please uh, tell us uh, when you anticipate? the uh, completion of the, the, the trail segments that are just now wrapping up and almost finished. We're waiting for the railroad signals to be installed at Loesch Road. Mm -hmm. The railroad company said mid-October. We're mid-October, they're still not installed. So I keep saying maybe late October. Okay. As soon as they're up, we will tell everyone, we'll pull down the fences and we're ready to go. And it will be open to the public from Cars Farm Park to Ellettsville, 7.2 miles. Wonderful, Amazing. thank That's you. Incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, questions or comments to my right? I just wanted to say that I'm hearing from a lot of people how much they're enjoying uh, all the work that's been going on toward the Ellettsville area and much appreciated. Uh, so, I'm looking forward to being able to get out there when my family comes home, we can take a little walk. because so I appreciate it. And I also appreciate the fact how hard you work to keep the parks looking so great for people to use and, and keeping it clean and well-maintained. And that's important. And these mowers and all of your equipment, it's what it takes. 
I do want to add that in the Flatwoods Park, we'll be getting a new playground. And we hope if everything is good with the bond, we'll be getting a new restroom at Flatwoods too. So it'll be getting quite a facelift. And I believe the folks over there will be very pleased. What? Fantastic. Go ahead. What, what is the schedule on the restroom at Flatwoods? <clears throat> Does this mean the bond passed? Yeah, it just passed. Oh, I can get working on that right away. As soon as I guess Jeff Cockrell says I can spend money. And I mean, does we'll, it take like six months or a year? No, or? no. We do the prefab ones, uh, very similar, if not identical, to the Cars Farm Park splash pad. They design it, they pick it up with a crane, and they put it in place. We have the plumbing, and it's ready to go the next day. So I can go through this process pretty quickly. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Flush toilets and running water. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. As yeah. Marty says, keep them clean and. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, we were talking about mowers. That is that is what we were talking about. <laughs> are, is, are there any more questions or comments for Ms. Whitmer? Okay, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, could I have a roll call vote, please? Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you. We'll buy them tomorrow. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and that brings us to number nine from Court Services. Council, I move to approve the court's request for a category transfer in fund 100225. General Fund Courts in the amount of $78,718.45 from the personnel category to the services category. Second. TSD, can you please promote Lisa Abraham to a panelist? Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, I just don't see myself on the screen, so I wanna make sure you can hear me. Um, it should come as no surprise that I'm before you once again to ask for additional money in the special services due to, this time it's both mental health and um, interpreting services. The amount that I'm asking for is coming out of the salary line, but they are due to excess money and line items from people leaving at a high level and coming back in at a lower level. It's also one that we had do the WIS study, the county council lowered someone from a higher amount down. So I do have plenty of extra money. Um, my mental health invoices, I look today, I right now have 11 outstanding invoices to be paid. Again, they average about 1500 each, with I'm sure more coming down the pike yet before the end of the year. I've already spent out my court interpreter grant that I had started with a little over 7,000 at the beginning of the year. And that ended, I spent every penny of it at the end of last quarter. So all the rest of my interpreter services will have to come out of the special services line also. So I figured it was best to go and just take what I can out of the sal extra salary lines that I do have and put it in my special services. I did transfer already $18,000 in, in September and I'm still getting close to wiping that out before the end of the year. So I'm definitely going to be needing some more. So I'm asking you today to, for me to transfer that. So I will have enough to outlast hopefully all the rest of my invoices for the rest of the year. All right, thank you. Um, are there any questions from council on this, Councilor Hawk? Uh, yes, I just wanted to tell you that as, as I was going over uh, the agenda and I saw that how hard you worked to make sure that you were uh, moving money where you had the extra money. And it reminded me that's the way all the departments used to do. And I want to encourage the other departments to sort of take a look at how hard you work to move money around rather than asking for an additional, uh, because that's the way it's supposed to work. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Any other comments um, or questions from council? Okay, um, 
I believe then we need to do a roll call vote. And so could we do that? Councillor McKim. Yes. Councillor Crossley. Yes. Councillor Iverson. Yes. Councillor Wiltz. Yes. Councillor Munson. Yes. Councillor Deckard. Yes. Councillor Hawk. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and now we're at item 10 with the health department. Council, I move to approve the health department's request in fund 11590000 health fund to add account line 16801 temporary transitional training line with a category transfer of $1,707 from the services category to the personnel category and to simultaneously amend the 2022 salary ordinance with the account line information is set out on the agenda. Second. Welcome, Ms. Kelly. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, so this request is for anticipation for hiring a new clinic manager for Futures uh, Family Planning Clinic. This will allow overlap and training from October 17th through October 28th uh, to allow for a smoother transition of this role. Sounds good. Are there any questions or comments from council? All right. Um, so this is right in line with, with what we've been recommending, actually. So that's terrific. And um, is there any public comment? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote? Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Crossley. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and um, we are at item 11 with the building department. Council, I move to approve the building department's request for a midpoint hire of the residential office manager in fund 100312 general fund building and to simultaneously amend the 2022 salary ordinances account line 10042 35 hours comment C non exempt to a midpoint higher status with an effective date of October 10th, 2022. Second. Um, welcome, Mr. LaRue. I might get this right this time. Yeah. <laughs> now it's right. Now it's right. You can pull it up a little bit since you're a little bit tall. There you go. Nice to see you all again. I feel like I'm here every two weeks. Um, I hope uh, the evening's going well for you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we, um, we uh, have recently filled the residential office manager position. Um, uh, the, uh, the office manager came from the city and has worked as an office manager in the city for 25 years. Um, the list of responsibilities is a near perfect and identical match uh, to what we needed in the office. I couldn't have asked for a better match. And uh, she has stepped right in and filled uh, the role uh, beyond expectation for the first three weeks. Um, I think this is a good move for our department and the, and the county. All right, are there questions and uh, comments from council? Yes. Did uh, Michelle, did you and E review the uh... Yes, we did. And we did verify that this person does more than qualify to for the three year uh, midpoint hire. And that um, that was reflected in the packet as well. Yep. So sounds good to me. Uh, questions or comments? Anyone else? No? Yes. I'm just delighted that we have people who've decided, yes, Monroe County government, that's a great place to work. I think we need to get that message out to a whole lot of people. I, I think it is a great place to work. Uh, <laughs> I came here thinking I didn't want to be a building inspector and I've stayed for almost 15 years. It's just been a good, a great place. I really appreciate it. It's good. good to know. Um, is there any public comment on this item? Okay, may I have a roll call vote, please? Councilor McCam. Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. 
Councillor Wills. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Great. Uh, now we're at number 12 with the highway department. Council, I move to approve the highway department's request for a fund to fund cash transfer of $200,000 from fund 11690000 local road and streets to fund 81630000 Hunters Creek Road phases two, three, and to simultaneously approve an additional appropriation in fund 81630000 Hunters Creek Road phases two and three in the amount of $200,000 in the services category. Second. Phew. Uh, welcome, Ms. Ridge. Good evening. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we're taking from our local road and street budget to put into the grant line. Um, we'll be close to closing out that project over the next year. Uh, so we're required uh, when we're done with that um, PO with NDOT to have a, a zero balance in those lines. Um, so this is where we try and start finishing out the project and getting everything closed up and coming to a zero balance. Okay. Are there any uh, questions or comments from council? I don't see any. All right. Um, is there any public comment on this item? And with no public comment, we will move to a roll call vote. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wilts? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Have a good night. Oh, I'm still on your There's more. Sorry, Kate. I haven't, sorry, scrolled, Kate. I haven't <laughs> scrolled down. Sorry. Oh, goodness. Oh, you're right. All right. Moving on. I Council, I move to approve the highway department's request for a fund to fund cash transfer of $150,000 from fund 11350000 cumulative bridge to fund 8170000 Doman Road Bridge number 83 and to simultaneously approve an additional appropriation to in fund 8170000000 Doman Road Bridge number 83 in the amount of 150000 in the services category. Second. Same thing. It is the same thing. Um, this bridge was awarded um, in the last NOFA call, which would have been actually last November. They award those in the spring. Um, so this was for the bridge replacement for bridge 83. We have a design contract in place. So this should cover our 20% because it's an 80-20 per um, split with NDOT. So uh, this will get us moving on design. Um, it's a construction year, a fiscal year, 2027. Okay. Uh, yes. And we might be able to use this bridge for a trail. That is okay. our goal is to repurpose this bridge, uh, the truss bridge uh, onto one of the trails. So that's great. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's a cool bridge. Um, are there any other comments or questions? Yes, Ms. Hawk? Are we getting to about the time when we can't cut any more trees down for a little while with the bats? That runs from October. Well, it's about 31st time. through April 1st. So yeah, between that window, like November 1st through April 1st is the bat window. And so no, we cannot cut any trees after that point. All right. Other comments or questions? Okay, is there any public comment on the item? Uh, then could I have a roll call vote, please? Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Item C. Council, I move to approve the highway department's request in fund 11760533, motor vehicle highway general and undistributed to create a new account line 40001 equipment and to simultaneously approve an additional appropriation of $56,000 in the capital category. Second. 
tell us a little bit about this? Um, so our heavy equipment lift that's in the highway garage currently is 25 years plus old. It was built with the original garage for, in 1995. Um, some of the parts are starting to become obsolete. So we want to have a backup um, system. So they have what they call column lifts and they're portable. It's not set in one bay, so we can move them around um, to, four to, to the other bays. Um, so this is our current, um, I guess, uh, option to go with. Um, a new lift is probably gonna be more in the $200,000 range, um, but this is also, this is something we'll be able to keep and also replace the permanent lift and then also have the portable lifts also. Let's see. Uh, are there questions or comments from council? Nothing here. Okay. Um, any public comment on the item? Uh, then may I have a roll call vote, please? Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wilts? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Now you may have a good evening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're at item 13, <clears throat> the Youth Services Bureau. Council, I move to approve the Youth Service Bureau's request in Fund 9103-9623, Project Safe Place, to deappropriate $160 in the services category. Second. Welcome, Ms. Mellon. Thank you so much. There, I think that's better. All right, thank you so much. Um, again, I'm back, still part-time administrative staff at the Youth Services Bureau. Uh, the person to my right here is the new deputy director, Vanessa Schmidt. She's been with the agency for about a decade, serving as a safe place coordinator and then the program coordinator, and now she's moving into deputy director role. So she's here with me because to meet all of you and see how this process goes. And so you'll be seeing her from now on instead of me. Um, but we want to talk about the deappropriation. Let's get to, straight to that. Um, we found out after the fact that actually we are going to be getting $160 less because national safe place fees increased and IYSA pays that money before they send us our money. So um, we have to deappropriate that. Uh, apologies for the mistake. OK, well, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. and. Welcome. It's good to see you. Um, are there any questions or comments from council? Nothing. All right. Is there any um, public comment on the $160 item? Seeing none, um, could we have a roll call vote, please? Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Y yes. Motion passed unanimous. And we are now on to item B. <coughs> Council, I move to approve the Youth Service Bureau's request in Fund 8120-9623, Runaway and Homeless Youth Grant, to create new account lines as set out on the agenda and to simultaneously approve additional appropriations $127,793 in the personnel category, $6,000 in the supplies category, and $35,452 in the services category for a total of $169,245. Second. Yes. Yes. So we're seeking to appropriate the second year of this grant. Our non-compete continuation application was accepted in September. And so this is the first time we've had the opportunity to come try to have this money appropriated so we can start using it. Um, yeah. So if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. All right. Um, are there questions or comments? Yes, Councilman. I just wanted to welcome Vanessa and say thank you for your work with Safe Place. And we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Any other so, so you have one more year of non-compete? Yeah, so this will run through. We will do another non-compete next spring. Um, and then the, assuming it'll be <laughs> approved, then that would be, run us through to 23-24. Um, and in 24, we will have to reapply. We, we compete for another yes. three years. Okay, exactly. thank you. Any other questions or comments from council? 
And is there any public comment on this item? No. Seeing none, may I have a roll call vote? Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have, have a good night. Oh, yes. Um, where do you plan to, uh, if this goes through, I expect, well, the $2,000 retention uh, bonus from what? on some of these grants what how will you be trying to get them out of the grants or, or how will that work well we won't be able to amend the award for the grant i mean we could probably do some transfers um i would have to talk to vicky about that what her plan is to do that specifically um i just don't have the information but we can get that to you as soon as we can thank you thanks and now we're at item 14 from the <clears throat> auditor's office Council, I move to approve the auditor's request for an additional appropriation and fund Curry Profile TIF 49340000 of $400 in the services category. Second. And uh, Ms. Gregory, are you going to speak with us? Yes. Cool. Okay. Um, hello, Council. So this is just um, a housekeeping item. This is an expense that Cook actually covers until um, this begins generating revenue. So we actually already received the money from Cook, simply need the appropriation um, for the permission to spend and pay the bill. All right. Um, are there any questions from Council? Is there any public comment? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Wilts? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you. Sure, and we are now at item 15 with the first reading of our uh, 2023 budget item A. Oh boy, I get to do this, don't I? <laughs> we will now uh, be reading the 2023 budgets for the Monroe Fire Protection District, uh, the Monroe County Solid Waste Management District and Monroe County, um, salary ordinances for 2023. There's a lot of reading involved. <laughs> so um, I've asked several of the counselors to go ahead to assist with tonight's reading and um, Councilor Crossley, will you please begin with ordinance 2022-40 Monroe Fire Protection District 2023 budget. Mm -hmm. Ordinance 22-40, <clears throat> excuse me. Be it ordained by the Monroe County Council that for the expenses of the Monroe County, the Monroe Fire Protection District for the year ending in December 31st, 2023, the sums herein specified are hereby appropriated and ordered set apart out of several funds herein named and for the purposes herein specified, subject to the laws governing the same. Such sums herein appropriated shall be held to include all expenditures authorized to be made during the year, unless otherwise expressed, stipulated, and provided for by law. In addition, for the purposes of raising revenues to meet the necessary expenses of Monroe Fire Protection District, the property tax levies and property tax rates as herein specified are included herein. Budget form 4-B for all funds, must be completed and submitted in the manner prescribed by the Department of Local Government Finance. This ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after its passage and approval by the Monroe County Council. Um, fund code, fund code 8603, fund name Special Fire General, adopted budget 
$1,108. Adopted tax levy, $8,677,022 with an adopted tax rate of 0 0.2530 and 86 point, oh, I'm sorry, 86.91 special cum fire. Adopted budget, 1,028,766. Adopted tax levy, 1,177,396 with an adopted tax rate of 0 0.0333 um, with a total but um, a total adopted budget of $14,936,874. Adopted tax levy amount total of $9,854,418 with an adopted tax rate of 0 0.2863. Second. Sure. Um, are there any further questions or comments from council regarding the 2023 Monroe Fire Protection District budget? No? Alrighty then. We will then go ahead and move to um, Ordinance 2022-41, Monroe County Solid Waste Management 2023 budget. And Councilor Munson, will you please read that? Yes. Be it ordained by the Monroe County Council that for the expenses of Monroe County Solid Waste Management District for the year ending December 31st, 2023, the sums herein specified are hereby appropriated and ordered set apart out of the several funds herein named and for the purposes herein specified, subject to the laws governing the same. Such sums herein appropriated shall be held to include all expenditures authorized to be made during the year unless otherwise expressly stipulated and provided by law. In addition, for the purposes of raising revenue to meet the necessary expenses of Monroe County Solid Waste Management District, the property tax levies and property tax rates as herein specified are included herein. Budget Form 4B for all funds must be completed and submitted in the manner prescribed by the <coughs> Department of Local Government Finance. This ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after its passage and approval by the Monroe County Council. Fund 1215, non-reverting capital projects, adopted budget zero, adopted tax levy zero, adopted tax rate 0 0.0000. Fund 8210, special solid waste management, Adopted budget, $2,966,631. Adopted tax levy, $2,094,339. Adopted tax rate, 0 0.0295. Fund 8283, Solid Waste District Depths Service, $305,370. For the adopted budget, adopted tax levy, $300,222, adopted tax rate, 0 0.0042, for a total adopted budget of $3,272,001. Fund 8283, of 0 0.0337. Second. Thank you. Um, are there any further questions or comments from council regarding the 2023 Monroe County Solid Waste Management Budget? All right then, we will move then to um, ordinance 2022-42, which is the Monroe County 2023 budget. <clears throat> Councilor McKim, will you please read that budget for us? I will. Everyone might want to, I don't know, <laughs> curl up with a drink or something like that. <laughs> yes. uh, Council, I move uh, adoption of Ordinance 2022-42, Ordinance for Appropriation and ta uh, Tax Rates, uh, be it ordained by the Monroe County Council that for the expenses of Monroe County for the year ending December 31st, 2023, the sums herein specified and hereby appropriated and ordered set apart of the general of the several funds herein named and for the purposes herein specified, subject to the laws governing the same. 
Such sums herein appropriated will be held to include all expenditures authorized to be made during the year, unless otherwise expressly stipulated and provided for by law. In addition, for the purposes of raising revenue to meet the necessary expenses of Monroe County, the property tax levies and property tax rates as herein specified are included herein. Budget form 4B for all funds must be completed and submitted in the manner prescribed by the Department of Local Government Finance. This ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after its passage and approval by the Monroe County Council. Fund 0101 General, adopted budget $44,660,019, adopted tax levy $24,623,802, adopted tax rate $0.2496 per $100 of assessed value. All tax rates are, are per $100 of, of assessed value. Uh, Fund 0102, election registration, adopted budget $1,112,314, adopted tax levy $780,760, adopted tax rate 0.0079, uh, fund 0124, 2015 reassessment, adopted budget $836,654, adopted tax levy $423,137, adopted tax rate 0.0043, Dollars uh, debt sir, uh, fund zero one eight zero debt service adopted budget three million five hundred thousand dollars adopted tax levy three million five hundred thousand dollars adopted tax rate zero point zero three uh, five 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 dollars uh, fund zero one eight three bond number three adopted budget zero adopted tax levy zero adopted tax rate zero fund zero two five four local income tax adopted budget three million eight hundred thirty eight thousand five hundred nineteen dollars adopted tax levy zero adopted tax rate zero. Uh, fund 0616 Convention and Visitors Bureau, adopted budget $2,307,297, adopted tax levy $0, adopted tax rate 0. Fund 0702 Highway, adopted budget $6,509,413, adopted tax levy $0, adopted tax rate $0. Fund 0703 Highway Special, um, adopted budget $0, adopted tax levy $0, and adopted tax rate $0. Uh, fund 0706 Local Road and Street, uh, adopted budget $820,001, adopted tax levy zero, adopted tax rate zero. Uh, fund 0790 Cumulative Bridge, adopted budget $1,851,386, adopted tax levy $2,101,059, adopted tax rate uh, $0.0213. Uh, fund 0792 County Major Bridge, adopted budget $2,856,992, adopted tax levy $3,284,754, adopted tax rate $0.0333. Uh, fund 0801 Health, adopted budget $2,000,000. $54,819, adopted tax levy $1,152,054, adopted tax rate $0.0117. Uh, fund 1310 Park Non-Reverting Capital, adopted budget $60,000, adopted tax levy zero, adopted tax rate zero. Fund 2102 Aviation Airport, uh, adopted budget $1,373,000. $47, adopted tax rate, uh, tax levy, $690,452, adopted tax rate, uh, $0.0070. Fund 2391, cumulative capital development, adopted budget, $4,346,635, adopted tax levy, $3,284,754, adopted tax rate, $0.0333. And fund uh, 2402 economic development, adopted budget zero, adopted tax levy zero, adopted tax rate zero for a total adopted budget of $76,127,096, adopted tax levy of $39,840,772, and adopted tax rate $0.4039. And those were the, uh, the DLGF controlled funds. Uh, here are the home ruled funds, not, not reviewed by DLGF. Uh, fund 9,500 extradition and sheriff's assistance, adopted budget $609. Uh, fund 9501 surveyor's corner perpetuation, adopted budget $144,464. Uh, fund 9502 Juvenile Per Diem, adopted budget $0. Um, Monroe County, fund uh, 9503 Monroe County 911 fund, adopted budget $652,000. Uh, fund 9504, Monroe County Convention Center Debt, adopted budget $636,000. Uh, fund 9505, Auditors and Eligible Deductions, adopted budget $262,265. Uh, fund 
uh, fund 9508, user fee jury pay, adopted budget, $24,500. Uh, fund 9509, user fees, juvenile probation, adopted budget, $18,883. Uh, fund 9510, user fees, adult probation, adopted budget, $238,339. Uh, adopted budget, uh, or budget 9511, user fees, project income. Uh, Adopted budget $545,596. Fund 9512 Supplemental uh, Public Defender Services. Adopted budget $1,151,987. Uh, budget uh, not fund 9513 Clerk's Record Perpetuation. Adopted budget $135,580. Fund 9514 User Fees Diversion uh, Prosecutor uh, Fund. Uh, adopted budget one. $134,715, fund 9515, user fees, court alcohol, drug, adopted budget $180,088, fund 9516, local health maintenance, adopted budget $143,878, fund 9517, emergency planning, right to know, adopted budget $10,150, fund 9519, misdemeanor county, uh, county corrections, fund uh, adopted budget $137,300, Fund 9521, Alternative Dispute Resolution, uh, adopted budget $14,700. Uh, fund 9522, Sales Disclosure, County Share, adopted budget $65,343. Uh, fund 9523, Convention Visitors, Capital Improvement and Maintenance Fund, uh, adopted budget $100,000. Fund 9524, County Offender Transportation, adopted uh, budget $3,000. Fund 9522, uh, 9525, Local Health Department Trust Account, uh, adopted budget $75,222, fund 9526, user fees, problem solving courts, adopted budget $50,507, uh, fund 9527, Westside Economic Development, Richland Township TIF, adopted budget $2,188,863, uh, fund 9528, 46 Corridor Economic Development, Bloomington Township TIF, uh, adopted budget $290,925, fund 9529, Fullerton Pike Economic Development, TIF, uh, adopted budget $150,000, fund 9530, Platte Book, adopted budget $84,122, <coughs> excuse me, uh, fund 9531, Convention Center Operating, adopted budget $594,000, uh, fund 9532, User Fees Cable Franchise, adopted budget $3,388,430, uh, fund 9535 PSAP Interlocal, adopted budget $2,585,000. Fund 9543 Public Health Emergency Fund, adopted budget $20,000. Fund 9544 Identity Identification Security Pr uh, Protection, adopted budget $18,000. Fund 9548 Parks Non Reverting Operating, uh, adopted budget $0. Fund 9551 Recorders Records Perpetuation, adopted budget $309,413. Adopted uh, fund 9552 stormwater management, adopted budget $2,539,221. Fund 9559 county elected officials training fund, adopted budget $18,000. Fund 9571 public safety lit, adopted budget $3,797,175. Fund 9588 federal award title 4D, adopted budget $52,584. And fund uh, 9589 curry profile TIF. Uh, adopted budget uh, $48,549,000 for a total of, uh, of home rule funds, adopted budget of $17,809,408. Thank you. That was amazing <laughs> and very much appreciated. Are there any questions <coughs> or comments from council on our 2023 Monroe County budget? All right, seeing none. Um, and if there are no further questions or comments or actions, the first reading of the 2023 budget is closed. And we move to item 16 on the agenda, which is the first reading of the Monroe County 2023 salary ordinance. I know, I was, um, I was and the first, um, the first item A, is the salary ordinance ordinance for elected officials. And I believe uh, that Councillor Iverson, would you please read the 2022 
43A 2023 salary ordinance elected officials. I would be happy to. Thank you. Uh, 2023 Monroe County elected official salary ordinance, an ordinance adopting Monroe County, Indiana, salary schedule and compensation policies for elected officials, ordinance 2022-43A. Whereas the Indiana legislature adopted Indiana Code 36-2-3, which established the Monroe County Council as the governing fiscal body of Monroe County, and whereas Indiana Code 36-2-5-3, grants the Monroe County Council the power to do one, fix the number of officers, deputies, and other employees, two, describe and classify positions and services, three, adopt schedules of compensation, and four, hire or contract with persons to assist in the development of schedules of compensation. Whereas the Monroe County Council wishes to establish compensation schedules and pay policies, now be it ordained by the Monroe County Council of Indiana, that this ordinance affixes the number and compensation for elected officials of the county from the period of January 1st, 2023 to December 31st, 2023, whose salaries compose the funds payable from any county fund or budget as provided by Indiana Code Section 36-2-5 are hereby solidly fixed in the following ma maximum level of salary shown on salary compensation. Grid. All payments made pursuant to the ordinance are contingent upon the strict compliance with and adherence to the benefit compensation fiscally related and state and federally mandated requirements of the Monroe County Personnel Policy Handbook. It is the intent of the County Council that this language will encourage compliance with personnel policies, which may have a fiscal impact on Monroe County government. For elected officials, time worked on or after January 1st, 2023, and prior to midnight of December 31st, 2023, shall be calculated and paid within the parameters of the salary ordinance and personal policy handbook, regardless of when the payment is issued. Elected officials shall not receive compensation above the salary range authorized for the position in the elected official salary compensation grid. The County Auditor shall not issue pay warrants for pay that exceeds the authorized amount specified in the salary ordinance. The compensation amounts listed are an annual appropriation amount. Calculation of the biweekly rate may result in a slight variation and will not be adjusted at year end. 2023 retention bonus supplemental. Elected officials are not eligible to receive the 2023 retention bonus supplemental. In addition to elected officials, the chief public defender will be ineligible to receive the 2023 retention bonus supplemental as the salary and compensation of the chief public defender is the same as the salary and compensation of the elected prosecutor. Elected official base rate schedule. In order to establish a more equitable system of setting compensation for Monroe County elected officials not set by the state, the County Council will be setting a base rate for elected officials with salary schedule of amounts to be applied. The base rate schedule is outlined in Section 1 of the elected official salary compensation grid. The Chief Public Defender is excluded as the salary and compensation is the same as salary and compensation of the elected prosecutor. The Sheriff is excluded from the base rate schedule as his or her salary is paid pursuant to Indiana Code 36-2-13-2.5 or Indiana Code 36-2-13-2.8. Additional information regarding payments, certifications, supplementals, and repair DMs are outlined in Section 2 of the elected officials' pay compensation grid. Monroe County Council policy regarding salaries tied to state-mandated salaries. The annual salaries for the Monroe County Sheriff is tied or related to the salaries mandated by the state of Indiana for the Monroe County Circuit Court judges and the Monroe County Prosecutor. The state-mandated salaries are amended annually on July 1st. It is the intent and direction of the Monroe County Council that any and all salaries paid by the County Council, which are tied or related to the Monroe County Sheriff, is mandated by the state of Indiana, shall be automatically amended at the same time as the state mandated salaries. The County Council recognizes that this is an exception to the general rule for county set salaries, which are generally modified on January 1st. Presented to the County Council of Monroe County, Indiana by induction in full for the first time this 11th day of October, 2022. Thank you. That was pretty impressive as well. Um, are there any further questions or comments from council regarding the 2023 salary ordinance for elected officials? Yes, Councilor Hawk. Um, you know, I didn't think about this earlier, uh, but what about Judge Raper? He's not an elected official. He's a county employee. So would he receive the retention? That's not covered in this, I'm not saying. He, he is in the other section for county employees. Since he's not an elected official, he's in the other section. Right. I just want to make sure that we didn't leave him out. No, we didn't. So he'll be covered in the next ordinance. Right. Is that, is that okay? Sure, yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Um, good question. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we will.
we'll move then to um, the ordinance 2022-43B, 2023 salary ordinance for Monroe County employees. Councillor Deckard, would you please read that? 2023 Monroe County Government Employee Salary Ordinance, an ordinance adopting Monroe County, Indiana salary schedule and compensation policies for county employees, ordinance 2022-43B. Whereas the Indiana legislature adopted the Indiana Code 36-2-3, which establishes the Monroe County Council as the governing fiscal body of Monroe County and Whereas IC 36-2-5-3 grants the Monroe County Council the power to, number one, fix the number of officers, deputies, and other employees, two, describe and classify positions and services, three, adopt schedules of compensation, and four, hire a contract with persons to assist in the development of schedules of compensation, be it ordained by the Monroe County Council of Indiana that this ordinance affixes the number and compensation employees of the county from the period of January 1st, 2023 to December 31st, 2023, including all officers, deputies, assistants, and other employees whose salary is comprised of funds payable from any county fund or budget as provided by IC 36-2-5. This compensation is limited by the following lines of maximum levels of salary shown on the salary compensation grids. All payments made pursuant to this ordinance are contingent upon the strict compliance with an adherence to the benefit, compensation, fiscally related, and state and federally mandated requirements of the Monroe County Personnel Policy Handbook. It is the intent of the County Council that this language will encourage compliance with personnel policies which may have a fiscal impact on Monroe County government. Outliers, special occupation employees, highway employees, correctional center officers, and staff, sheriff, merit deputies, and probation officers covered under a contractual agreement or whose salaries are determined by a state prescribed rule, order, guideline, or mandate shall not receive compensation above the salary range authorized for their position in their corresponding salary compensation grids. The county auditor shall not issue pay warrants for any pay that exceeds the authorized amount specified in the salary ordinance. The compensation amounts are listed as approximate annual appropriation amounts. The calculation of the biweekly or hourly compensation rates may result in a slight variation will not be adjusted at year end. Compensation paid on or after January 1st, 2023 and prior to midnight, December 31st, 2023 shall be calculated and paid within the parameters of the salary ordinance and the personnel policy handbook, regardless of when the work is performed. Monroe County Personnel Policy Handbook. Any item not covered with the salary ordinance shall be governed by the Monroe County Personnel Policy Handbook. Job description classification definitions. Beginning calendar year 2022, council approved moving use Moving using the updated classification and levels for Monroe County government job descriptions. The listing of all classifications are outlined in section A of the ordinance notes. Compensation levels have been updated using alphanumeric from A through E. Full-time hire date compensation step increase schedule. Employees attain a new compensation step increase level on the first day of the pay period, which includes the anniversary of the most recent full-time hire date. The compensation step increase schedule is outlined in section B in the salary ordinance. Midpoint hire compensation procedures. Employees who qualify and are approved by the council to receive a midpoint hire status begins at the three-year level on the compensation grids applicable to the assigned job description classification and level. The MPH only applies for the approved positions within the original requesting department. Midpoint hire status, three-year level, only applies to the base rate, base rate pay of any employee that is not including the years of service pertaining to longevity and or vacation calculations. A listing of approved midpoint hires with term dates are outlined in section C in the ordinance notes. <clears throat> longevity scale. The effective date for longevity is the employee's most recent full-time hire date of employment with the county. All records must be verified by the auditor's office. Longevity pays based upon the following schedule of complete and un uninterrupted years of service. A break in service will cause the employee to start his or her years of service over again. To be eligible for a longevity payout, an employee must still be employed on the day after his or her anniversary date. Elected officials do not receive county longevity pay. Employees except for probation officers whose salaries are determined by state prescribed rule, order, guideline, or mandate do not receive county longevity pay. The longevity scale is outlined in Section D of the ordinance notes. <clears throat> 2023 retention bonus supplemental. During the 2023 calendar, all Monroe County employees, except those specified below, will receive a retention bonus supplemental paid out in a quarterly payments based on a schedule outlined in Section E in the ordinance notes. The part-time deputy coroner employees will also be eligible for receipt of the 2023 retention bonus supplemental. Employees must be hired on or before the date is outlined and actively employed on the last day of the specified quarter. The supplemental payment is to be submitted separately from the regular payroll, the regular payroll claim. 
prior years of service credit. Beginning calendar 2017, County Council approved allowing complete years only of prior years of service per each term of full-time Monroe County government employment be applied when calculating the rehire of an employer's compensation step increase level. Months of service, which are less than one full year, shall not be counted nor combined in order to achieve a complete year of service. For example, an employee who worked for one year and three months shall be credited with one year service. The council administrator must verify all prior service with employee personnel records and or with a payroll perf report before being applied to the returning employee salary. The council administrator will notify the department head and the employee services department of the prior service credit total verified and granted. The council administrator will maintain a database of employees with confirmed prior service credit for future use. Any additional information and or explanation of the Monroe County government salary schedule and compensation policies are included in the salary ordinance for the purposes of clarification and transparency. Monroe County Council policy regarding salaries tied to state mandated salaries. Annual salaries for the Monroe County Chief Public Defender, the Chief Pu Deputy Public Defender, and the Monroe County Circuit Court Commissioner are all tied or related to the salaries mandated by the state of Indiana for the Monroe County Circuit Court judges and the Monroe County Prosecutor. The state mandated salaries are amended annually on July 1st. It is the intent and direction of the Monroe County Council that any and all salaries paid by the Monroe County Council, which are tied or related to the above mentioned salaries mandated by the state of Indiana, shall be automatically amended at the same time as the state mandated salaries. The Monroe County Council recognized that this is an exception to the general rule for county set salaries, which are generally modified on January 1st. Additional detail, including defense services, Defense Services Standard, Standard G, Supreme Court Compensation Information, IC 33-39-6-5, and IC 36-2-3-17 are incorporated by reference. Presented to the County Council of Monroe County, Indiana, in Indiana by, the, by induction in full for the first time this 11th day of October, 2022. Second. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for the reading. Um, are there any further questions or comments from council regarding the 2023 salary ordinance for Monroe County employees? Yes. It's, you know, it's just one of these sentences that I had to read about three times before. Um, I figured out that it is correct, but it's really confusingly written. Employees, except for probation officers whose salaries are determined by a state prescribed rule, order, guideline, or mandate, do not receive county longevity pay. It is correct. I just wonder if there's a way to rewrite that to be a little bit clearer. Yes. I, read that too. I, I just want to say that Molly and I struggled with that, and that's the language we came up with. Okay. All so. right. Okay. <laughs> I just like, I literally had to read it three times trying to figure out, wait, is it saying what I think it's saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a tough one. Okay, that's, that's fine. It was just a, a matter of style. I think it is. Okay. Correct. Tell <clears throat> I have an alternative proposal for that sentence okay. now that I rethought it. We could make it read employees whose salaries are determined by a state prescribed rule, order, guideline, or mandate do not receive county longevity pay. Um, and then add a sentence that say probation officers would be an exception to this rule and would receive county longevity. I think that would be clear. Okay. I'll send you. Mo move we amend uh, the salary ordinance to include the language that was just uh, presented by Ms. Turner King. Second. Second. Um, if we're moving, do we vote? Yes. Okay. But roll call. No. Could we, um, any um, discussion about that? Okay. I didn't catch who seconded. The sure. amendment. I did. Thank you. Or we jointly seconded. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Councillor Hawk. 
Yes. Councilor Crossley? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor <clears throat> Iverson? Yes. Councilor Wilts? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Great. So, Any further discussion? Yes. So, can, yeah. Okay. When I asked about uh, Fred Riper and then I was told it what was taken care of in this. All right, does that mean he will get the retention bonus? I wanna make sure that we're clear and we don't have to hold on it. No, he okay. he is not an exception. He's he's in, so he is included in his amounts have been included in uh, the budget. So I'd already cleared and talked th uh, through everything with Lisa Abraham regarding his, because he, um, he doesn't get paid as much as an elected official, but his salary is based yes. like 75%. So, All right. So, and I mean, I'm otherwise, not objecting I mean, to him getting it. I want to make sure he does. Yeah, he does right. get it. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Um, any other questions or comments mm -hmm. on this item? Okay. Um, if there are none, then the first reading of the Monroe County 2023 salary ordinance is concluded. Thank you again for all that reading. That was very helpful <clears throat> and much faster than uh, any one person probably could have done it. Um, we are at item 17 on our agenda. And this is the discussion on the 2023 probation officer COLA increase. This item was tabled from October 4th. And um, I'd like to reopen a discussion regarding an additional COLA increase for probation officers in 2023. I would probably need a second, I guess. Second. Thanks. And um, Cheryl, did you wanna introduce, reintroduce? I would like to uh, offer a recommendation and provide information. Great. And additionally, um, I want to make sure that uh, Judge Decock has joined uh, Zoom. Is that, is that the case? I had a message from Chief Probation Officer Linda Brady that I don't think that she's joining tonight. Um, I think what more would be more efficient is if the council had a discussion and decided which option um, they were considering in regards to the probation salary. And then that information can be taken to um, Judge Decoff. And the reason we're taking that information to Judge Decoff is because um, there's an IC code IC code 36216.53 reads that um, in consultation with at least one judge of a court or division of a court authorized to impose probation and at least one probation officer, the county shall it, um, consult with before the adoption of the salary schedule. So we're not adopting the schedule tonight. So I think it's safe to have the discussion and then consult with Judge Decoff based on whatever recommendation you're going to be making. As I understand it, the consultation with Judge Decoff uh, is to be for the full council, not just individual members. The statute does read the um, county, city, or town fiscal body. So I think it would be the entire council. Yes. But it does not say how that consultation has to occur. So I think she could submit a memorandum or something in writing if she chooses. So she would That's be welcome to do that. She would be welcome to join us at a meeting whatever is like. convenient. So that sounds very good, thank you. Well, picking up uh, from our last meeting, and just to summarize, um, my recommendation was that probation officers um, be given an additional uh, salary increase so that their uh, COLA would be a, equivalent with what other county employees are receiving. The, uh, the state of Indiana mandates a minimum of 3.33% COLA, uh, but the, 
the 5% COLA is what we have agreed up for uh, county employees. And so uh, we have calculations as to uh, what this would cost. And I would like to review that for the public and for you all. Uh, first, let me uh, specify um, the actual increases. And uh, these vary based on years of experience. In addition, uh, council member Iverson uh, has talked to the council about increasing the initial probation officer's salary with zero years of experience to $40,000 per year. And he asked that uh, I include this tonight in the discussion, so I will do so. So years of experience, zero, salary of $40,000. Years of experience, one year, $41,684. Two years of experience, $46,372. Three years of experience, $51,825. Four to nine years of experience, $53,514. 10 to 14 years of experience, $58,867. 15 to 19 years of experience, $64,754 and 20 plus years of experience, $71,227. So that would be the new uh, minimum salary schedule that is recommended for probation officers. And to give you further information, um, this uh, is not going to change our budget at all. It is simply going to change the salary schedule. And Calculations by the staff uh, of the probation department have provided some very interesting information. Uh, the 5% uh, increase uh, in the county general fund uh, would be an additional $31,869, but projected reversions at the end of 2023 are in excess of that uh, at $34,380. So there, in that fund, there may be no need for an additional appropriation even. Uh, next, for the public safety lit fund, uh, the, the, the COLA 5% increase is $2,499 and the projected uh, re reversions end of 23 are $18,975. And finally, the special purpose lit fund, um, the total is 10,326 additional. And uh, the projected reversions are not quite enough to meet that. Um, that is, they are to, estimated to be $9,669. So it would be a very small amount for uh, the special purpose lit that may need to be appropriated. And that would not need to take place until um, about October of, of next year. So I've given you a lot of information. Um, I suppose I should summarize by saying the additional increase to treat our probation officers like our other county employees will cost us an additional $44,694. And I think that would be money very well spent. Okay. So I'm ready for questions. You're ready for questions. Thank you for that and, um, information. Yeah, go ahead. Just to quickly interject before questions, I think Judge Decoff has joined via Zoom. Oh, great. Oh, he has. Excellent. Um, okay, great. She's promoted to panelist. Um, so if, if Judge Decoff wants to make comments, um, have, can she be, is she able to? Okay. 
Okay, terrific. So jump in at any point. Um, wow, that is a lot of information and um, a lot to think about. Do, do we wanna start down here with questions? Yeah, go ahead, um, Mr. McKim. So I just wanna make sure I understand your proposal here is to just amend the 2023 salary ordinance, but not the budget and just assume that there's gonna be enough slosh in the um, in the reversions to be able to pay for it by the end of the year. Exactly. Okay, that's good. I like the way you phrase that. Slosh. <laughs> slosh. Okay, other questions? Yes, Councilor Hopp. Uh, <clears throat> because this really won't start until mid-year, uh, do when we vote on the budgets for salaries, are we be voting on a total year, but it really won't start until mid-year. So are we talking about just the last half of 2023? Are we talking about the last half of 2023 and then the first half of 2024? I'm, I'm confused by your question, Ms. Haas. Um, I would say that my thinking of the salary is it's an annual salary and it is um, calculated and paid bi-weekly uh, throughout the year, just like all employees' salaries are. And so it affects, um, the increase would, would affect uh, everything starting with the first pay period. Is that correct, Ms. Michelle? Yeah, uh, so I, I'm kind of confused of, of what yeah. Councillor Hawk is asking. I, I think she's talking about um, them being on a different schedule for when their increases might start. Is that the case? Mm -hmm. Oh. Because of this tied I, to the I, state I would budget. I refer to uh, yeah, Mr. Hatfield I mean, because mm -hmm. I, don't I know can the understand answer. that process with regards to how they're paid and right. how they budget for it. So. Welcome, Mr. Hi. Hatfield. Uh, Troy Hatfield, Deputy Chief Probation Officer. Um, probation officer salaries are a calendar year. Um, so any annual increases occur January uh, and then through December. If we have step increases, they, they fall on the anniversary date, just like any other county employee. If it's during that pay period, that's when the step increase uh, goes into effect. But we're paid and the salary schedule is on a calendar year basis, January to December. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I do have another Yeah, go ahead. Um, I noticed on the last uh, uh, advertisement information for looking for a new probation officer, uh, part of what it was saying was that they were going to need their own transportation and reliable transportation. And I remember several years ago when I advocated strongly <laughs> to get um, that the county would provide vehicles for probation officers and regretfully i've not kept up to date with how many you have are you still receiving those from the county yes we we do have several departmental vehicles that our staff are able to use um, that's typically in the job description that we have uh, somebody who has a valid driver's license, reliable transportation as a just in case. If all the vehicles are in use or uh, maybe there's some that are you know, being repaired or something like that, but we still need to do our jobs, um, then we'll pay our employees mileage and that to use their own transportation if that's necessary. Be, because I thought that could be very off-putting to a lot of uh, young folks that we know uh, or at least in the past, we uh, a lot of the beginning probation officers would come from IU, uh, and uh, they don't all have transportation. Um, so, and and I, that's also the reason why there's such a, a turnover because they don't tend to make it their life work. Uh, they're just. It's a way for them to uh, make money, finish out their college, whatever. And the other, so I'm, I'm wondering if we have to have that on that uh, advertisement because it may slow down the ability to find uh, good people. 
I appreciate the concern and, and definitely something we'll review and take a look at as far as the advertisement goes. I know it's part of our job description itself, so, and, um, uh, but we'll look at the advertisement because that's always a brief kind of job description. I would say one of the biggest issues we have right now in terms of hiring is the starting salary. To, to be quite honest, I mean, 2023, uh, the starting salary is like 38,000 for somebody who has to have a four year college degree. Um, in uh, this uh, school year, uh, state legislature put a law into effect that uh, all school contracts for teachers, another four year degree, has to be a minimum of $40,000 starting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Department of Child Services caseworkers, um, once they get through their initial cohort training, um, uh, they are paid over $40,000. Uh, I can't tell you the number of times I've been on the phone with an applicant to explain the, to them the salary schedule and all the benefits that come with, with working as a probation officer in Monroe County, Indiana, and there are a lot. Um, but when I get to that salary and people are going to have to take a pay cut to come to us, that's the end of the conversation. And, and that's what we're struggling with right now. I have another question. Sure. Um, I know that uh, when Indianapolis, Marion County was advertising, um, they made it clear that if you didn't already have that degree, you had six months to finish out your degree and go ahead and, and is that the case throughout the state? Well, to be a probation officer in the state of Indiana, you have to have a bachelor's degree. You gotta be 21 years of age, a US citizen and be of good moral character. And that's locally defined. Um, so if they are hiring prior to receiving the degree, they cannot be considered a probation officer at that point until they've received that degree. And then once they're on the job, uh, they have one year to complete um, uh, probation officer orientation or, or basically our, our initial statewide training. Um, and then within six months, they have to pay, uh, pass a certifying exam. If they don't pass that exam or complete that training, they cease to be a probation officer in the state of Indiana until those things are completed. Mm -hmm. um, but so if they are hiring like that, they can't sign anything. They can't perform probation officer duties until that degree is complete. And also, may I ask one more question? Of course. Also, um, at the last meeting, uh, we were told that you, you had your, if I had the term, if I heard it right, uh, that you had all of the field officer uh, positions filled, having to do with the thing of, of having to do with the WIS study. And is that so is a field officer? I should know, but I don't. Is, how, how much different is that than a probation officer? Yeah, so our field officers are non degree positions. They're on the civil poll schedule um, of the, the salary schedule. Um, and fortunately, with the new WIS study, those uh, uh, salaries have increased greatly. And, and we have finally filled all of our positions. Uh, knock on wood, that'll stay that way for a good long time because we really want to keep uh, valuable employees with us. Um, so the differences with our field staff is, again, they're non-degree. They, they don't serve as probation officers. What they do is they go out and do um, our, our visits, mainly on people who are on electronic monitoring. So we're talking about more of our serious uh, offenders that uh, are a threat to public safety. And um, so they're out four, five, six times a week visiting, you know, visiting offenders, I'm sorry, four or five, six times a week um, at their home, at their jobs, at other places where they're allowed to be in the community while they're under those conditions. Um, as well, they do other work. Um, uh, you know, they'll pair up with probation officers to do other home visits as well. Um, so it's not just that population, but we, we use them uh, as a resource for us um, uh, to help monitor our, our, our population out in the community. So uh, the starting salary for a field officer is even lower than the starting office uh, salary for the probation officer? Uh, you're testing my memory on that one. I so it's a, it's a we'll civil we'll code B, I soon. think. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, so you'd ha I'd have to look that up on real quickly. But um, Do you want it for 2022 or for what it's going to be in 2023? So 2023, the probation officer salary is 38,000, I think 107. So I'm not sure what the civil pool B is for that at a start. Yeah. Did you say that the field officers were non-degreed? Is that correct? So they don't have to not, have a four-year degree. It does not require a degree. Okay. So uh, I, you know, I can't remember, but I believe um, our correctional officers in the jail are 
similarly classified, though they're under kind of a different contract. And my understanding is that, uh, you know, they're starting somewhere in the 40s, uh, mm -hmm. which is fantastic for them. Um, but again, that's, you know, uh, probation officers starting at 38,107. Um, yeah. Just that's our struggle. Mr. Hatfield, what uh, did you say the level was? Civ poll B, I believe. B, okay. The Civ poll B for 35 hours. Is that Correct. what you're wanting? Okay. Civ poll, Civ poll B, 35 hours is an annual of 37,438. Entry. Entry. That's yes. the, that's that's, the yeah, okay. that's the base. Mm -hmm. Now they are receiving the full 5% COLA this year, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's for 2023. Yeah. Yeah, that's including that. Right. Other questions, Councilor uh, Douglas? And I, I want to make sure I'm hearing what I've seen in the emails that I get from Linda Brady. People are not taking the positions and salary is part of that discussion, right? It's, I cannot take this job because this doesn't, this is not gonna pay me enough, essentially. Absolutely, we had another candidate for, that we were looking at for uh, our CASP probation officers. So that's a community alternative supervision program, house arrest, electronic monitoring, caseload. Um, we went all the way through the end of the background investigation and uh, we we're getting ready to set up a final interview and when we called to set her up for a final interview, she had said she's sorry, but she had taken another job that was going to be somewhere in the mid 40s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, just to, to make the comment, I had the privilege to be liaison to probations for a couple years and not this year, but a couple years. And the amount of emails, particularly during the pandemic, I recall vividly that Ms. Brady and I had back and forth about this very issue over and over in vacancies was startling. Um, and I, back then, that's why I talked about this, frankly, to a lot of council members. So I appreciate what you're saying very much. Council McKinn. And I just want to remind everybody, uh, you may not have seen it, but in one of the handouts we were given, it summarizes the, the two proposed, the existing 2023 minimum salary schedule along with the first proposal, which is just 1.67% above the minimum. Then the second was the second proposal is 1.67% above the minimum with an additional floor of 40,000 for the entry level. And so this, this is very helpful. I don't know, Cheryl, if you put this together or who, who, whoever, whoever put this together, this is very helpful. <laughs> oh. Oh, Kim? Oh, thank yes. you. All the way at the bottom. Okay. Think. Is this this is it? And, and if I if I may, that um, if you say one point six seven percent increase over the twenty twenty three schedule, it's not quite right it's because, because um, of the, math. the math won't equal a five percent. Because I, I think I believe the intent is that uh, the salary increase would be five yeah. percent from the twenty twenty two salary. So really, if you want to do the math to make it equal, it'd be one point six one six five percent. Above the 2023 scale, right? I see what you're saying. Um, are there other questions? I thought I saw Peter with a Peter. Go ahead. Peter had a question. Oh. Councilor Iverson. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask a question, of Mr. Hatfield, while he's at the podium there. Um, if if we were to go ahead and uh, make this change, would that have any impact on recidivism rates uh, in our jail? Uh, that is to say, uh, if, if we make sure there's enough uh, POs out there, uh, does that have an impact on the way that people come in and out of our jail? I would say yes. I mean, because right now we've got several open positions um, in our department. And what happens when we have a vacancy is that we have to have other officers supervise those cases. So our caseloads increase. Um, and when you have caseloads increasing, you, you afford yourself less time to spend with each individual client that we have. Um, and so that takes away time of building skills. It takes away time of, of teaching new behaviors. It takes away time um, to, to reinforce uh, and support you know, positive steps they're making towards behavior change. Um, so when we have those increased caseloads, it is very likely that we're going to see more problematic behavior that may result in additional time in jail. 
um, and, and using those types of services in our community. Thank you. Council McKen. So I just wanna make sure on this, on this proposal, uh, the, the sheet that has proposal one and two, does it do the amount, do the salary amounts, the salary amounts accurate given what uh, Mr. Hatfield just informed us that the actual multiplier is 1.6165. Did I get that right? Yes. What Councilor Mus Munson read earlier mm -hmm. is exactly a 5% increase yeah. over the 2022 schedule, which I believe is the intent that, that Councilor Mun Munson right. has had. Okay. Uh, this is the column that is uh, shaded beige. Proposal number two. Proposal number two, beige. Yeah. yeah. The, the only exception would be the 40,000 at the entry level. Right. And um, that was also discussed at our last meeting. And the reason for that was further explored this evening. And I think, uh, I think it makes good sense. Uh, I would like to, uh, at this time, ask if we might uh, consult uh, with Judge Dekoff, since she has taken time to be here, and we would like to have her comments on this proposal. Hello, thank you. I'm sorry I was not prepared to um, appear tonight, so you got to forgive me. Um, I am um, very much appreciative that this conversation is going on and the proposal is being made. Um, we, the Board of Judges, do support that um, this, um, I, I, I'm, you have to forgive me because I never know exactly what terminology that I should be using at when proposals are done and um, how I'm supposed to um, make the proper language, but obviously we support the um, 1.67. We believe that it would, um, that it's very beneficial to our um, our people, I support the idea that we can um, raise the salaries, especially for incoming probation officers to make it more attractive to um, work in Monroe County and work in our office. And um, so I was told tonight that um, this was going on and that you might need um, something from um, the judges for the statute. And I'm here to do that and to answer any questions and to basically um, indicate my support and my appreciation. Thank you. Um, are there questions for Judge Decoff? Uh, Councilor Hawk? Yes, I wondered if there was any consideration of uh, raising that entry level, that very first to get them started. Uh, rather than raising everybody just just that first year that when they first start out i know that went up more than the others a bigger percent but i just wondered if there was a way to adjust that i mean because if the point is you can't even get them to start at 38 will you know less than two thousand dollars more make a difference. I, uh, I don't see. Was you're asking? Was there consideration of an even further increase? No, only the increasing the minimum of the entry level, right? At the, at the entry. Of the, of the entry. entry. I was just. But maybe there's going to be. Uh, it, you know, if they're going to get that retention. Uh, bonus as well, then they would be able to work toward getting that. So maybe that will help. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have to have a car, I think something has to be done about that. When, it, when they're told they have to have a car, and if they don't really have to have it. Yeah. Um, I would encourage all of our departments to look at that requirement if it exists for any of their jobs 
Mm -hmm. um, and consider whether or not that job truly requires someone to have that transportation. I mean, being able to get to the office is one thing, but if you're stating that they need a reliable vehicle of their own, um, mm -hmm. that might be an undue burden. And, and it could also be viewed um, unfavorably from an accessibility standpoint. Um, there are plenty of folks who can do a lot of the jobs, but maybe for some reason or another do not have a vehicle that they are physically capable of driving. Um, just throwing that out there. <laughs> are there other questions? Yeah. A, a comment, please. On behalf of the council, I would like to apologize to Judge Decoff for this last minute discussion. We didn't know until uh, just shortly before the meeting that there was a requirement under state law that we consult with the judge uh, in this matter. And I know we want, you would want us to follow state law. So we really appreciate you stepping <laughs> Unexpectedly, thank you very well, much. Well, there's there's no apologies necessary, and you're exactly right. And I obviously would like all of us to follow the law, so I appreciate that. And <laughs> there there is no apology necessary, and I was um, glad to be to be able to join. So thank you. Thanks. Um, any other questions for for the judge? I mean, I, I want to to respect. Yes. Actually, my question is really more for Ms. Turner King. Does 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 what we the conversation we just have fulfill our statutory requirement for consultation with the judge? I believe so. It, the statute just requires consultation. Okay. Thank Fantastic. You. Um, okay, I did have just a couple of questions that might um, sound a bit um, like they're on the, the the devil's advocacy side of things and um and i'm not sure who who wants to answer them but they're in response to some things that you said um mr hatfield and i'm curious as to if the state you mentioned re was requiring a minimum of forty thousand dollars annually for teachers a similarly four-year degreed position and they're actually in control of, of setting the salaries for the probation officers, why would we not expect them to be doing the same sort of um, level of, of salary for their probation officers? Sure, so um, that was uh, legislation put in, I think uh, not last session, the session before last about the teachers and that future contracts had to be at least $40,000. So. Um, you know, that was created by our legislature. Um, probation officer salaries are set by the judicial branch of government. So uh, the state judiciary, uh, the judicial conference or board of directors for the judicial conference are the ones who set the salary scale for probation officers. So two different branches of government, and that's why we, we have the two, uh, two different things going on. Is there advocacy um, going on with that branch of government to maybe think about increasing the, the minimum yes excellent good to know um i'm also curious if surrounding counties are um at a, at the same uh pay scale so is are other counties sticking with that um the same thirty-eight thousand ish entry level so I don't know about all of our contiguous counties. I know Councillor Iverson had um, uh, read through a list of uh, several counties at the last meeting that are paying mm -hmm. above the minimums. Um, and many of them are within driving distance. So, uh, you know, Marion County and uh, several others that are within that kind of uh, region um, do that. I don't know if Councillor Iverson ha still has that list handy. I don't have it handy in my hand. Uh, I, I do not have that list handy as I am out of town. Uh, I might ask that uh, maybe Councilor Munson has that list, but we can certainly go back through the minutes uh, and recall that list as well. Yeah, I can totally do that. 
And um, oh, uh, I think uh, uh, Ms. Brady might have that list. She just rose her hand. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, so I, I don't have it completely memorized, but I think uh, Marion County uh, pays 8.3% above the minimum and uh, Johnson County pays above, Hendricks um, County uh, pays uh, the, the county longevity, but the, um, uh, the, the, the one that's the closest just I think probably is the Johnson County and um, also Hamilton County does. Um, Vanderburg County is another, Wells County. Those are a few that are on the list that I know for sure pay, pay above. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I promise to watch the meeting when I get a moment. <laughs> um, are there any other questions from council or, or comments? Yes. I was just gonna say, as far as the comment goes, um, thank you to Councilor Munson for bringing this to the attention of us as well, um, and Mr. Hatfield. Um, and Ms. Brady and Judge Decoff as well. And again, as we you know continue to talk about how we need to attract more folks um, to be employed with Monroe County, um, certainly us trying to you know raise our pay um, to coincide with the COLA uh, would seem like the best thing to do. Um, so I'm, I'm thankful that this is a discussion that is happening. And as the liaison, one of the other liaisons to the probation department, um, and I've learned a lot and continue to still learn, um, I'm thankful for this and definitely plan to support. So thank you. Other comments, questions? Yes. Just very quickly, special thank you to Molly Turner King our attorney because if we hadn't had her advising us, we would not have been aware of the, re, uh, the state requirement for consultation with Judge Decoff. Councilor Hawk. Yes, is this decision going to be made at the same time as we meet with the uh, merit deputies uh, and so forth? When we look at their request, are we going to do these separately or are we going to look at them and say, these are the ones that we are going to be supporting or how are we going to do that? That, that will be a total council decision. I have to have a um, 2023 salary ordinance adopted on the, on the 18th. So if you guys decide you want to include this, you can do it then. If you want to kick it down the road until December, you know, I mean, you, Actually, you have until then to. Yes, these are not elected officials, so we could always. You can uh, always come adjust in them amend. In the next yes. year as well. And it would certainly be uh, my intent to look at, at all of those together as a group to make sure that we're. Uh, saying yes to one group and then we're looking at merit deputies or or the people working in the jail and saying well yes we did that but now we're not going to do the other but I I've just I'm just curious what our what our next step is. Can just be clear that just to be clear the merit deputies and the corrections officers did receive the five percent COLA for 2023, right? Yes, they did. And so what they're asking for is- Is, is an addition. Is an addition. So we, I, you know, I, I can see an argument for going ahead with this proposal because this is just basically equal, equalizing the playing field. It, that, and that has been a very longstanding practice in Monroe County that we give all the employees the same cost of living adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm, I understand what Councilor Hawk is saying, and we'll certainly hear presentations from these other collective bargaining units, but um, I certainly don't have any heartburn at all about moving the probationers, probation officers up to the, the uh, 5%. And the other question is then, uh, for some reason, uh, if the, whatever the state sets then for the next year, 
uh, will we just bring all of the county employees up to meet whatever the state says? The state will then sort of be in charge of whatever our increase will be from now on. Is that what we're saying? I don't, I don't think that's what that we're saying. All. I mean, or is this I, just I, going I, to be one year and that's it? The, I'm, I'm just trying, I don't know what we're doing. And I it was to. for 2023, it was one year. It is not setting out a policy. Um, and it's certainly not turning things over to the state to tell us how we should handle our increases. And it will go away, assuming that the state's 2024 right. uh, cost of living increase is greater than the 1.67%. Right. It's yeah. going to wash away what we've, what we've just yeah. done anyway. Well, okay, but that's what, that's what I'm saying. If they should have a higher increase uh, for the following year than what we thought we, what we might think we could do for the other county employees. Will we meet what they're doing? And that, those are questions we, and I think they're legitimate questions. Well, I don't think we could venture a guess at that yeah, right now. That's next year's council. Yeah. And their headache. And they'll figure that out at that time. Whoever. Whoever's elected to do that. <laughs> or not. <laughs> Poor souls. Um, any other comments? And I have a question for Michelle. If we were to recommend um, that support supporting this proposal, is is it your intent to try to then change the salary ordinance to reflect this and get this done by the 18th, or would we be doing this afterwards? No, um, all we would need to do is um, approve a, an updated or amended salary ordinance for the probation officers. Because mm -hmm. currently what is in the salary, um, the um, salary ordinance is just mm -hmm. a copy of the amended or the minimum. And then what we would do is, um, address that a above the minimum grid has been applied and that would be it just included so it would just be a a, a spreadsheet basically okay. and i would work with troy and make sure that our numbers match based on the information provided here okay okay so but i mean i don't i the salaries themselves are not reflected in right each individual line, we we have everyone refer back to a grid. So, yes. If if we do this as an amendment to the twenty twenty three salary ordinance, do we need to have two readings if it's not unanimous? Tonight, I have the be, feeling that we're gonna... tonight would be the first. I I would assume tonight is your first reading, oh. and then. All right, so yeah. I, I'm going to just go ahead and make the motion so at least we have it there with the first one. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, council, I move that we amend the 2023 salary ordinance to uh, include proposal number two as laid out in the documentation that uh, the council has provided. Second. Is, are there any uh, further comments or questions on the proposed amendment? Right. Yeah, so it's just a first reading. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, she, she, she can open up the discussion. Oh, right. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Understood. Um, are there any further comments or questions from council? Um, public comment. Are there any members of the public out there at all? Uh, who wish to comment. Okay. Um, well, that then um, rounds out the, th the discussion and um, your motion stands as sort of a proposed amendment. Do we want it's to- a, It's a first reading. It's, yeah, it's just a That's first right. reading. All right, so it's attached. Booked on there. All right. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, 
In that case, then let's move to item 18, which is long awaited. Council, I move to approve the August 23rd, 2022 work session summary minutes as presented. Second. Do we have any council members who would like to change um, or edit or otherwise modify the minutes? All right, so do I have to do a vote? Uh, could we have a roll call vote, please? Councillor McKim. Yes. Councillor Deckard. Yes. Councillor Wiltz. Yes. Councillor Iverson. Yes. Councillor Hawk. Yes. Councillor Crossley. Yes. Councillor Munson. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Are there any comments from council members on any items that they like to bring up or not the comment time? So before council Iverson does it, I'll go ahead and do it before he does. Um, today is the absolute last day for people to register to vote. Um, and early voting starts tomorrow. So if there's anybody that is still burning the midnight oil of trying to register to vote or just in general to check your voter registration status, um, please do so. I believe you can go to indianavoters.in.gov. Um, to check your voter registration status or register to vote. And even if you think that you are, definitely um, just check it anyway, just to be on the safe side so that we can all do our civic duty and do what we feel we need to do. Thank you, good reminder. Um, any other comments? Okay, all right, well, then this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.